What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS4 tutorial. So in this one, has this ever happened to you? Have you ever gone on to your PS4 or you've been using your PS4, your jailbroken PS4, and all of a sudden, all of your apps just disappear and you're back to what looks like a stock system? Or you go to turn on your PS4 one day and it gets stuck on the PlayStation logo for a bit too long during the boot up sequence, and then suddenly all of your stuff is gone when it boots you into the home screen. This is a classic database corruption issue, something that is quite rare, but it does still happen from time to time. And people can obviously freak out when they see this, they think all of their stuff is gone. But typically, if you go to the settings and you go down to your storage, you will see that you still have the same amount of storage being used on the system. So your apps are still installed, they're still there. However, what's happened is the database has been corrupted. The database that indexes all of the apps on your home screen has been corrupted and has been reset. Now, anytime the PS4 has trouble with the database or detects some kind of corruption, it will do a database rebuild. And when it rebuilds the database, it does not see fake package files as valid apps to index in the database, and therefore they get left out. And that's why you see nothing on your home screen and it looks like all of your apps have been uninstalled. Now, I have shown how to fix this in the past in a much older video, However, that required a kind of convoluted setup with a Python script on your computer. That's not really necessary anymore. We now have homebrew apps that can fix the database for us and it does a much better job. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that here in this video. First of all, though, I need to simulate a database corruption. Luckily, this is pretty easy. All I need to do to simulate a database corruption is boot my PS4 into safe mode and then use the database rebuild option, which will force a database rebuild which will not index any of my fake package files and the database will be rebuilt without any fake package files in there. And then as you can see after the reboot here, we're now back to what looks like a stock PS4. Okay, so there we go. Everything has disappeared. Looks like we're back to a stock system. But again, we go to our storage here. You can see that we still have content showing up here uh, on system storage and extended storage right there. Okay, so what we're going to do first of all is jailbreak our PS4 again. So I'll head back onto the internet browser. I head to my exploit host, kmeps4.site. And then we're going to run our gold hen payload once it's finished caching. Okay, so now we have that running. So we should be good to go here. So one of the things I would recommend trying, and they, this may be fixed. I'm going to bring this up to lightning mods. But basically, if you try and go to package-zone.com forward slash install, this should automatically try to install the homebrew store. And then from the homebrew store, you can install other homebrew apps that can be used to fix your database. So we could try this. It doesn't work at the moment because there seems to be an issue where I think it detects that the homebrew store is already technically installed, even though it's not showing up in the database. Uh, and therefore, it doesn't allow it to download and reinstall it using this link. As you can see here, it always just says not enough free system memory. But if that's fixed in future, that's something you can try if you get the homebrew store installed using this method then you can use the homebrew store to download other homebrew apps so that's one option but like i said like i said it's not working right now so the other option is we're just going to use a usb drive to install the apps we want so so on the computer you can head to pkg-zone.com so you can either use the homebrew store if you can get it automatically installed on your ps4 to download these apps or you can do it here on your computer with pkg-zone.com so what we want is either the Items Flow Game Manager or the Apollo Save Tool. Both of these tools have the ability to fix the database. So you can go to the Apollo Save Tool and hit Download or Items Flow Game Manager and hit Download. I'm going to download this one here. Um, I'll also download Apollo as well as a backup. Then another thing that I would recommend getting is this PS4 toolset by Snake. So you can download that right here. Go ahead and download that one. So we'll also download that one as well. Okay, so at this point, you want to go to your USB drive and you want to copy these package files to the root of your USB drive. So there we go, that's Apollo. We've got Items Flow and the tool set all downloaded there onto our USB drive. And then we're going to eject that USB drive and plug it in to our PS4. Okay, so if we go back over to our Gold Hen menu here, we go to Debug Settings, Package Installer. We're going to want to install the Items Flow Game Manager first. You notice it said it's already installed, even though it's not showing up. So we'll install that first of all and head back and then run the Items Flow Game Manager. Okay, there we go. So we are up and running. So all we need to do here is hit the Options button. And you can see that everything shows up properly here in Items Flow. So you could launch everything from here. 
we want to get the apps back on the home screen too. So we're going to hit the options button and then we're going to go to rebuild fake package database. Press X. We have a few options here. We can rebuild the internal database uh, or only DLC excluding the external hard drive or we can reactivate an account or content and then we're back to the internal database. So I'm going to use the option here to rebuild the internal database. So it says rebuild the PS4's app database, restores missing XMB games, apps, DLC from internal storage, including app to USB. So even if you have a USB drive and you're using app to USB to store some of your games on the USB drive, it should fix the database for that as well. So we're going to rebuild fake package database here and then it actually shows you which you know, items it's discovering, what apps it's discovering and adding them to the database right there. Got Patch Installer, RetroArch, PS4 Explorer, basically discovering everything by the looks of things. And Call of Duty Black Ops 3 rebuilt. So 27 apps fixed, not fixed zero. So supposedly it fixed all of the apps right there. So if we go back, we'll press the middle button here, close out of items flow. And it still looks like everything's missing, but if we refresh it, by either logging out or logging back in, but usually you can refresh it just by opening the web browser and closing it again. And there we go, you can see it has refreshed. So we've got Gold Hen Sheets, we've got Apollo, we've got Elden Ring back, we've got the store, we've got a bunch of media apps, Dying Light 2, Patch Installer, RetroArch, PS4 Explorer. That's all been reinstalled. Now you may notice that some other things are still missing. This is not everything. I had other games on here as well. Um, what else did I have? I had Bloodborne, I had a few other things, I had a few other media apps like Hulu and various other things that are not showing up here. But if you remember, initially I had those inside folders. So they are installed, it's just, it's kind of glitched, I suppose, so you can't really see them, but they are available. So all I need to do is add them to the folders and then they'll show up. So if I press the options button here and I go to add to folder, and then we'll just go ahead and create a new folder called Homebrew and we'll put all of the homebrew in the homebrew folder. So we'll select, uh, we'll get rid of that. So we'll do items flow. We'll do the gold hen sheets manager. We'll do Apollo. We'll do the homebrew store. And there's uh, the patch installer. And we've got that as well, IPI. And then you can see all of these apps are showing up here, uh, right here. All of that stuff showing up and pretty much everything else. I think that's all the homebrew. So we'll confirm. And we'll click OK. And now you can see all of our apps are back here. All of the homebrew apps that weren't showing up before, like Orbis FTP, internal package installer, the SMB clients, that's all showing up there as well. Let's just do the rest. We'll add more folders. So we'll create another folder called, uh, let's call this one media. So we'll create a media folder and we'll select all of our media apps and we'll add them to this. So, so we've got YouTube, Netflix, we've got Plex, Crunchyroll, we also have Hulu, Paramount Plus, Pluto TV, ADN, Apple TV. Uh, so we'll add all of that to the media folder. And now we have all of the media apps are accessible again. And then finally, we will do one more for our game backups as well. So we'll go ahead and add to folder. This folder will be called backups and we'll select all of our game backups here as well. So Elden Ring, Dying Light 2. Uh, we'll just throw in our emulators as well, our RetroArch cores, and also we'll leave Okage Shadow Kings. That's actually a retail copy. Now we'll do Dead Island and Resident Evil 4 and Black Ops 3. And we'll add those in there. So that's pretty much most of the stuff restored. However, you may notice there's still a couple of items that are missing. And those are the ones I actually had installed on the external hard drive. All of these apps that have been restored are from the internal hard drive, but I did have Bloodborne. I think I had the FTP app and maybe something else also installed on an external hard drive that's formatted as extended storage for the PS4, as you'll see right here, extended storage. You can see we've got applications not showing up because the database is corrupted. Now it may not be showing up because we need to refresh it. So I'm gonna unplug the extended storage drive the external storage drive here and then I'm going to plug it back in and see if that corrects the issue. There we go it's now showing up so that's all I had to do there all you have to do is uh, basically well you shouldn't just unplug it like I did I'm not really I don't use extended storage normally so um, I didn't realize that you're not supposed to just yank it out you're supposed to uh, wait or you're supposed to like remove the storage device properly so what you should do is uh, hold down the ps button here go to devices 
and then find your USB device. Stop using extended storage. That's the option you're supposed to select. Then you can unplug the extended storage drive, plug it back in. And then if it gives you a message saying it needs to be repaired, just click OK, let it do that. And then they should show up. So now even the stuff that was on the, ex the extended storage drive, the external drive, is now showing up here as well. So we've managed to recover everything. Even after that database corruption, we've managed to recover every single app that was missing. That has been successful. Now, one final note. You notice there are some new options showing up here that weren't before, live from PlayStation, the capture gallery, and the library. Now, I normally had these hidden in my database. They were set to be invisible, so they wouldn't show up uh, because they're kind of unnecessary for a jailbroken PS4. I don't need these apps. So you will, after a database rebuild, anything that you set to be invisible will show up as visible again, like these apps right here, live from PlayStation Capture Gallery and the library, which I'm not looking for. So what you can do to fix that, first of all, we'll just add to our homebrew folder, we'll add our FTP client back in there, and then we'll add YouTube TV to our media folder, clean that up a little bit, and then obviously Bloodborne, I'll add that to our backups folder. We'll get that back on there. Okay, so now all we need to do is hide these apps again. And that's why I mentioned downloading the PS4 toolset. So if we install the PS4 toolset application, this one right here, this gives you the option to hide the apps in the database, which is pretty handy. So we'll run this PS4 toolset. Okay, and then from here, we can go down to hide slash show apps. And this takes a little while and there we go. It now shows up the application so we can scroll over to the ones that we don't want showing. We don't want, uh, I guess, live from PlayStation. We'll make that invisible. Capture Gallery, we'll make that one invisible. And unfortunately, it locks the library for some reason. So I'm not able to make that one invisible. That's unfortunate. I think that's a bug in this application because you can make it invisible in the actual database file with FTP. But anyway, we at least we're able to make the other ones invisible. So we can go ahead and do that. And then if we exit here and we load up the internet browser and close it, you can see those apps disappeared. So unfortunately, we just have the library one that we can't really get rid of, but all of the other ones have been successfully hidden. And that is pretty much it. That's how you can properly fix your database by just using homebrew applications. You can use items flow, you can use Apollo. If you go into the user tools in the Apollo application, you'll find the option to uh, fix the database. So you can also use that instead of items flow. The reason why I personally like items flow more is because items flow can actually show all of your applications uh, even when they're not added to the database. In the actual items flow application, they show up. And if there's any one that's not being recovered properly, you can actually try to launch the application in items flow and it will say, hey, this application's not in the database. Do you want me to add it to the database for you? And then it can add them individually as well. So lots of options there in items flow to be able to fix corrupt databases. Another thing to mention as well is that it's always a good idea to take a database backup. Most exploit hosts have a database backup payload that you can run every so often. And that can basically back up the database to your USB drive. And then there's also a restore database payload, which can be used to restore that backed up database if you get a corruption in future. Although you will have to take regular backups so that your backup isn't too out of date for all the recent applications and stuff that you've been installing since you made the backup. One final thing to mention as well, other homebrew apps and specifically uh, the old version of fixing the database using the Python scripts would, co would cause this bug where you weren't able to actually uninstall applications after you've ran them. So you'd run a game like this that's been restored after the database corruption. And then after you fix the database and you run the game, when you press the options button, uh, if we close the application, and then you'd press the options button to try and delete it, and the delete option would not be there. It would be like it's a system app and you're not able to delete it, uh, which was a problem caused by previous uh, recovery options. However, with items flow, this is no longer a problem. You can run your applications after fixing it with the database fix and you'll still be able to delete it afterwards as well if you ever want to uninstall the app. So that's another thing that's been fixed since then too. So yeah, much, much easier now to fix a database corruption. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, do leave a like and subscribe, and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.